everyone, my name is Holden Hardman. Thank you so much for joining me again for another video. We are very excited to be doing the Snyder Cut today, heavily requested. Just to keep on schedule, we are temporarily skipping Suicide Squad and temporarily skipping Wonder Woman. Since Wonder Woman, uh, the first one is a prequel, hopefully it won't impact too much. You will be missing some more of Wonder Woman's backstory, but I don't think it's essential to move on. I have not seen the Snyder Cut yet. Have you seen it, Prime? Prime hasn't seen it, Jeremy has. So I'm really looking forward to watching this uh, for the first time uh, with everyone. We very rarely do new releases on the channel, so uh, I'm really looking forward to that. For context, back in 2017, there was a theatrical release of Justice League. We talked a little bit about how Zack Snyder, the director, was working on it, shot most of it, I think like 90%, 95% or something. His daughter ended up committing suicide. He stepped away, they brought in Joss Whedon, who had just come off of doing the Avengers movie in Marvel, and I think he had done Age of Ultron at that point as well. So WB literally brought in the Avengers director to finish off Justice League. Seemingly a smart move. I, I thought it was a smart move at the time. A lot of studio interference, tons of reshoots, essentially made it a completely different movie. Awkward tones, it was considered a bomb, far below expectations, and just furthering the divide between the DC and the Marvel continuities and fandoms. Began this movement online of release the Snyder Cut. We want to see the original vision that Zack Snyder had. Four years later, he comes back in, got permission through somehow through HBO Max, got some support internally to edit his movie together. He did some reshoots. Apparently it was only like five minutes worth of reshoots. So most of it was filmed. I remember even with the initial trailers, seeing some shots that I was really looking forward to seeing that didn't end up making it into the movie. So I'm really looking forward to this. I want to see how much of a redemption arc this will be. Having seen the theatrical Justice League, you have not seen it. So I kind of want to go back maybe next week and shoot that so you can see the theatrical and we can compare the two. Jeremy, you're the only one that has seen it. Without giving anything away, how do you think that will enjoy it, uh, Prime and me and Jenna, and how you think Matt will enjoy it? Really good basic recap of everything. There is a lot of behind the scenes stuff that makes this project just endlessly fascinating. I suspect they will probably be studying this stuff in film school at some point because like Holden said, just the ability to be able to compare these two distinctly different cuts and just to observe how big a difference editing techniques can make. If the footage is the same, how dramatically different can these little post-production things make the movie? In fact, Warner Brothers pumped $70 million into allowing for the Snyder Cut to happen. However, Zack Snyder did not take a salary. He did not get paid anything for this. It's a passion project. It's a labor of love for him. And yet, it's... If nothing else, I am so excited to see a filmmaker that's not constrained by the limitations of theatrical releases. Nobody would ever allow for a four hour and two minute movie outside of this, just simple mathematics. You can only play half as many movies during the day, so box office isn't gonna be near as big. I'm really curious to see how this hits everybody. I have watched it once, I've got Lots of feelings because it's lots of movie, but I don't want to lead the witness. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more of the backstory as to what makes the Zack Snyder cut of this movie so unique. Y'all sounded extremely intelligent with all those words. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is four hours and two minutes. Yeah. Uh, what I understand is broken down into chapters so we can take an intermission. Remember guys, for context, we did the extended edition of Lord of the Rings. Don't do that. Each of no, those, no, 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 don't do that. Each of those were four hours don't long. Don't do that, we don't did those, do that. Don't we, you backtrack. <laughs> we did those after we worked full hour shifts. It was awful. At our jobs. It was terrible. We only had that, we did three of those movies in one video. We did 12 hours of Lord of the Rings for one video. We could do four hours. For, don't anyway, backtrack okay. like that and act like it's not that bad. It was awful. <laughs> we'll take an intermission. Shit is broken up into chapters. Prime, going into it uh, for the first time along with me and Matt and Jenna, how are you feeling going into the Snyder Cut? First time seeing Snyder Cut with you, Matt, Jenna, Jeremy, way to go. <laughs> no, uh, I'll talk real quick about the theatrical cut is, I like the beginning and then I did feel the ending was just, I, I didn't know what that was. I, kind of weird, so it's interesting to see now this movie's almost twice as long. They had a man, they had two hours. I mean, exactly. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so twice as long and not liking the ending of the theatrical cut, so it's gonna be really interesting to then two more hours of an ending. Hopefully it, it can hold me through because that, that would have been a long time of just sitting there going, Ugh. But this cast is amazing, so I'm interested to see how it plays out. I did not hate the theatrical Justice League. I did not think it was 
all that great. I was disappointed. I still want to watch it with everybody, but I was not a fervent hater of it. You could definitely tell that there were two director's visions at work at the same time. Jenna, how are you feeling going into the Snyder Cut? So is this the DC's version of like the first Avengers movie yes. where like everyone yes. comes in and I'm just looking at everyone standing there. There's a couple in the back row we haven't met. In Batman v Superman, they showed little clips of Aquaman Flash and Cyborg. Very briefly, there was those little symbols that Wonder Woman was, was yeah. going through. And Matt, how are you feeling going into this Snyder Cut? Okay, uh, I'm, I'm asking right now. I'm not like, yay, movies. Superman, wasn't he dead? We'll get to it. You shouldn't be. Wasn't he dead? We'll get to it. But wait a minute. The dirt started to come back up. I knew it. Wow. I've heard Snyder Cut about a billion times since the recording of this. I don't know what to expect. I'm not gonna lie, selfishly, I'm very much like, I can't wait to see Momoa dude. Isn't he Momoa? Jason Momoa. Nailed it. I'm excited to see what he looks like physically. From my fitness background and all that is, I wanna see the, the physical condition and all that, so I'm very excited to see him. I know he's like, he's like every woman's dream. So I wanna see what all this hype is about. This is the first time I've ever seen him on screen for anything. This is sort of like the, the first Avengers like Jenna pointed out. I'm doing my absolute best to not do that comparison game. I wanna give DC their fair due, their fair shake. And I am excited. I'm excited to bring in new characters even though everybody hated Wonder Woman, so let's do it. Everybody hated Wonder Woman? No. Nah. It, it, well, oh, Wonder Woman 84, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, everybody yeah. hated that, right? Well, first Wonder Woman was pretty well received. All you have to worry about is we've seen Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, this is just a continuation. All right guys, let's go ahead and get into it, the Snyder Cut, but first, a word from today's sponsor. I've never seen a server this fast. The online protection, the encrypted data, it's impenetrable. Install NordVPN. If there's even a 1% chance someone could hack into your online data, then we have to take it as an absolute certainty. I can hack into any system known to man, but I can't hack into NordVPN. With this power, you can unblock region-blocked content from some of your favorite streaming services, like Netflix. You'll have access to so much more content without having to purchase additional streaming services. To need a team. With NordVPN's 24 hour customer service, I already have one. With six simultaneous connections and super fast connections, no hacker will be able to stop us. I have daddy issues. And the best part is, Alfred, even if you don't like the service, there's a 30 day money back guarantee, no questions asked. <laughs> All they have to do is go to nordvpn.com slash Holden or use code Holden to get a huge discount off a two-year plan plus one additional month for free. I am the knight. Does anybody know what happened to Aquaman? The man's got some pipes. Bill 300. What? The director? Holy crap! Pretty sure we said that. I love 300. Did Hans Zimmer do anything to this? Evil Fjernes. I don't do it. I'm building an alliance to defend ourselves. He said, get out. I hate to see this. I don't like you coming here, digging into my business, getting into my life. I want to be left alone. You ever hear of Superman? Yeah, God bruh. fighting next to me. My point exactly. We were Dude, stronger together. Good job. You're out of your mind, Bruce Wayne. 
I just wish he was like, nobody, nobody asked y'all to. <laughs> Imagine me and that barista finally got in that movie. Jeez, all right, he's going down. Just believe in something, honor, respect. What an. Oh wow. Where'd you learn to count? <laughs> Glams to the sword. Oh, man. How terrifying that. Oh boy. Nice. Okay, that's pretty definitive. He's dead. Are you okay, princess? I have a concussion. I would just give anything just for like red to just start like growing. <laughs> Maybe it's going back to sleep. Evil does not sleep. Nice. It waits. That's a good line. Yeah. Is this a new dude? I have come to yes, enlighten that. you to the great darkness. Guard it with your life. Oh, okay. These horses can go for 35 miles an hour. Love it. Send to the mother boxes. Find the missing two. He will be pleased. He will see my worth again. Looks like we need an exterminator. It will reach the lands of men. What a shot! Monsters. You know a lot about monsters, don't you? Divided, too separate to be one. I build a stronghold in the name of his glory. Let me make a plea to him that I may come home. You betrayed him. I saw my mistake. You still owe the Great One 50,000 more worlds. No protectors here. No lanterns. No Kryptonium. For dark side. Darkseid, a name cursed and feared in every universe. Made from a 
a science so advanced, it looks like sorcery. The Unity cleanses a planet with fire. The defenders of Earth attacked and fought as one, alongside the Guardians from the sky. A golden age of heroes. Oh. Oh, wow. and Amazons would enshrine and guard one of the three sleeping mother boxes. <laughs> they said the age of heroes would never come again. Yeah. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm late. <laughs> Plan there. <laughs> Literally me though, I can't judge. He's still reaching down. <laughs> you said you had experience walking dogs. Oh my god, look at her! <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, that's rest. <laughs> Hold the scene. Hold the scene. Till you're singing, Good God, he's fat. Love it. About Thank you. Me. <laughs> now my foolish boy. Here I am. There's four people. I hope everyone's okay. For dog work, I always bring a meat snack. Oh my god. Right? I start on Monday. <laughs> oh my god. I've never betrayed my own people. You already have. Their own C3PO. Modern 2D2 is the one who. Oh yeah, that one too. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Barry Allen, Central City. Go to him, I'll work on number four. Doesn't mean he can hack into our system to change his friend's grades. His family lost their houses here. Victor helped her because he's got a good heart. There's maybe two in her. Cool motive, still murder. <laughs> Stop making excuses for him. You're just as busy as he is, but you still make the time. Ooh. Aww. Can't wait to see what you're gonna be tomorrow. Ooh. Oh. Jeez. That, was, that good. was good. Dr. Stone, I'm sorry. Oh, boy. But do you not Dealt with that every single day in the ICU. God. You still have a life ahead of you. The tip of the tip. Oh, that's cool. No firewall can stop you. No encryption can defy you. The fate of the world will literally rest in your hands. Oh, uh, yes. Through the market or make money. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Victor, these are the words and deductions of a scientist. Let me speak to you from my heart, not as a scientist, as a father. Oh. Come here, Edmund. I want you 
to stop coming to see me. Okay, um, please don't ever say that to me again. Living in the past, make your own future, Barry. Barry Allen. Very attractive Jewish boy. <laughs> I know you have abilities. I just don't know what they are. Uh, yeah, I do competitive ice dancing. It's what they use on the space shuttle. Very competitive ice dancing. <laughs> Look, man. You're the Batman. I'm putting together a team. People with special abilities. Stop right there. I'm in. <laughs> I need friends. Great. I call it the speed force. It caused me to burn a tremendous amount of calories, so I am just a black hole of snacks. What are your superpowers again? I'm rich. <laughs> what are you working on? Uh, it's a gauntlet. A gauntlet that captures and dissipates energy. Maybe you should work on a lasso too. In black, of course. Something is not working. Mm. It's like you have a date, Miss Prince. Fuck the world. Okay. What part of this looks like a gift to you? We need you, Victor. I lost someone I loved once, but I had to learn to open back up again. Hmm. Bruh. But we bombarded with x-rays yeah. from the electron laser. The inner core of the metal becomes superheated. Looking at the hottest thing on Earth. Exact words I said to my prom date. Uh, she dumped me anyway. Your messages. With pictures of Spider-Man. I'm Diana. Hi, Barry, I'm Diana. That's not right. Great. <laughs> awesome! That's a bad signal, that's your... Oh, sh sorry. <laughs> was taken tonight. Wow, okay, so another <laughs> scientist. <laughs> Do you really think that... Oh, wow, they just, they really just vanish. That's rude. We do this together. Weakness. You carry the scent too, but stronger. Oh, I will die before I tell you. So you do care of people, Dad. <laughs> Let's dance, cake.
have the blood of the old gods in you. Relax, Alfred. I'll take it from you. Uh, d do I know you? He doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. <laughs> Happy for you, man. <laughs> I bring news. The anti-life equation is carved into the surface oh, of this no, very no, no. world. No. Can it be true that you have found it? Anti-life is here. And when this world is scorched, I will come for my great prize. You will come to Earth. And all of existence shall be mine. In an act of desperation or madness, mm. the researcher harnessed the power of the Mother Box. <laughs> Use that power to keep me alive. One of these things? Aren't they psycho-murder machines? They're change machines. Anybody with a match can turn a house to smoke. Put them on the box. Turn smoke back into a house. I'm not gonna say it. I lost the farm. Can I stay with you? I just miss him. I miss him so much. There is something you can do for me, honey. Come back to the living. Oh. oh, that. Oh, wow. Who the hell is that? Marshall will lead you to a close. The dead are dead. The box brought Victor back. Of Crazy eyes is right there with me. But we don't know enough about Kryptonian biology. We cannot try unless we activate the box. Victor's father activated a mother box more than a year ago when Superman was still alive. Didn't call out to step him off until Superman died. There's no us without him. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Let's go. You know we could do this in a nanosecond, right? We could. I hate Atlanteans as much as you Amazons do. Hate is useless. <laughs> Slide that in there. You should get dressed. I'm always dressed. <laughs> ID. Oh, gee, okay. Clear this place out. Duh. A microbe of alien origin. That, that doesn't make any sense. I was mistaken. The alarm's legit. Shit doesn't wash me. I can override the security protocols, but there's no time to repair all the electrical damage that Luther's power surges caused. There's Jeez. not enough charge to wake the box. Got through that line of dialogue. I might be able to do it. Barry, I'm initiating the countdown. Five, four, four three, two. Two, one, this action. Oh, wow. What the hell? Go?
See, even he's like, y'all couldn't clean. He's back. He's scanning us. What are you doing? This is no time to break. Them. It oh. senses danger. Arthur, we need to restrain him. one of the best superhero moments, I think. <laughs> Jeez, man. thing on Earth outside of a nuclear reactor. Now, anything that hot would have to break off the charts on a thermal imaging system. You have a satellite? I have six. Last <laughs> Property of Bruce Wayne. I wish. I wish. Your mother got behind on the payments. She never told anyone. She's a proud woman, Clark. Oh, yeah. This is Alfred. I work for him. <laughs> I want to plug into the Unity, one-on-one. -on -one. We can expound from the inside so we can break it back into three. Will you marry me? The ring. Oh, Ooh, I really hope he's brushed since then. <laughs> you taste like death. Are you really you? What is it? Barry Allen was right here, and he said to me, Lois Lane is the key. Prepare for his arrival. You're gonna have to make a choice. They will join you in the sun, Cal. All the hopes and dreams of Krypton. Oh, yeah. Did it fly, son? It's time. Oh, shit. Bruh! Goosebumps, oh, yeah. Goosebumps.
<laughs> Not impressed. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was. You said you had something I'd want. If you want the Batman, his name is Bruce Wayne. We can't be out in the open much longer. He'll come for us. Who have you ever loved? Oh, contraire, my little fish dick. He knows exactly what it's like to lose someone he loves. Be very careful with the next thing you say. Isn't that right? Batman. How many alternate timelines do you destroy the world because you don't have the colonies to die yourself? A truce? Bruce, happy to discuss with you in any way like why you sent a boy wonder to do a man's job. I held Harley Quinn and she was bleeding and dying with her last breath. Make no mistake, I will fucking kill you. Jeez. Then I do it slow. You're good. I'm sure you know Darkseid is not finished with Earth. Who are you again? The Martian Manhunter. Clear! For Autumn. Uh... Four short hours later, here we are talking about Justice League. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. We were joking throughout. I want to talk a little bit about how the theatrical cut differs from this, but I don't want to give away too much because I still want to watch it. What an interesting situation just to be in as far as the movies go, that this even happened. Jeremy, this is your second time watching it, so I want to know, seeing it again for a second time with us, and uh, just where you stand on it. Uh, yeah, it is a long movie. And this is the second time I saw it, as Holden just now mentioned. And to be honest, guys, I kind of feel like I was I was won over by it. Just almost beat to submission in a lot of ways. It's like, <laughs> there's so much to it. And the first time I watched it, I found myself to be just almost overwhelmed by sensory overload. There's so many different disparate parts that come together and in a way it's like, you get a little bit of a Wonder Woman setup. You get the Flash setup. Each of the different characters, because they don't have their own movie, they essentially get their own chapter in the beginning of this. And while it is a big task to watch a movie at this length, I think it really helps for there to be some sort of catharsis 
when the team comes together. When we saw the theatrical cut, and this isn't a spoiler, but a lot of the moments felt unearned and just through sheer will, Zack Snyder was able to invest us in each of these characters. I do, real quick, I've had really mixed feelings about Zack Snyder as a whole, and we have said several times, he's a very good visual storyteller. I think there are so many instances in this movie that heavily are inspired by classical Greek, Roman, and Renaissance artwork. There's so many like very painterly shots in it that I, I really love. The aspect ratio thing, it bothers me. I'm not gonna lie about that. I think it was a weird choice. However, understanding that he visualized this as being an IMAX movie, it makes sense why he wanted to stay true to that. However, if they weren't playing it on an IMAX screen, they'd have had to crop out every single shot anyways. So as far as the artistic integrity, I wouldn't mind if they just like blew it up, fit it across all the borders, all that kind of stuff. But anyways, this time around watching it, I actually really enjoyed it. And there's a lot of things that- Wait that a minute. I, if Tommy was so, can get both digital and film, you think that they could get this and not the 4-3-8 ratio. Jeremy's right, usually with I'm that. kidding, I'm okay. kidding, go ahead. <laughs> I could hog up as much time as the runtime of this movie, but suffice it to say, I gave it like a four out of 10 the other night. At this point, it's way better than Batman versus Superman and Man of Steel, I, I think. So I've I've had a little bit of a reassessment of the movie and I'm excited to give you guys my, uh, my score here at the end because it's changed. This is leagues above the Theatrical Justice League, in my opinion. I think that it was great. I think that they fixed, as far as the development of the characters, Cyborg really in particular. He did not have nearly as much focus on him in the original. I feel like, and I'm, I'm sure maybe Zack Snyder and them agree, but it would have been nice to have had, I guess, that part in a separate movie instead of like one four hour chunk, because we spent the first half of the movie, probably rightly so, focusing on the characters, introducing the Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg, um, and that was needed. That had to happen for those moments to feel more earned. I'm still kind of processing everything that we saw. Prime, what did you think, man? Yeah, just like you said, four hours trying to compress all that into thought and what I just saw, four hours versus the original theatrical version, you'd almost expect there to be a little bit more drawn out explanations to things. But along with that, I feel like they did a good job. I felt the story was not rushed in any way. Granted, I keep thinking four hours long, it shouldn't feel rushed. This versus the theatrical cut, let me tell you, when I first watched the theatrical cut, right from the beginning, there were issues I had. Like with Steppenwolf, I much enjoyed this look of him. It looked eons beyond what the first version looked like. That alone let me settle into this movie a lot better. I really don't have a lot of complaints on it. I thoroughly enjoyed, and four hours long, at least for me, didn't feel like I was sitting there for four hours. I mean, it was long, but there weren't any moments that I was sitting there going, this, this movie, it, it's not over yet, even though they kept yeah. kind of showing yeah, scene. Good. Yeah, it, it started to do that at the very end, but wow, yeah, Zack Snyder's Justice League, I, I enjoyed it. I really felt like the story was much more, it definitely felt like one director's vision, which I will take any day over the theatrical Justice League of two different directors trying to fiddle with each other's work. As far as comparing stuff, I agree. I think Steppenwolf was much better in this, like just his visual look. I love seeing Superman come back and the black suit. Theatrical cut, you know what, I'm just gonna have to just sort of talk, I'll try not to spoil. Theatrical cut, they, they lean so much more into evil Superman, you know, they joke about him being kind of like a pet cemetery Superman from the get-go, that was a worry. This, they didn't really think about that being a possibility, they just thought bringing him back would he'd be back as normal. So it was kind of cool seeing, wait a minute, he's not back, we, we didn't anticipate this. And then it just sort of being, I'm just kind of confused, and then okay, I'm back to I'm back to myself. I like that a little bit better, that they didn't overemphasize evil Superman. The fight scene was a little bit extended in this. Jenna, how did you feel about the Snyder Cut? This did not feel like four hours long. I really liked the chapter separations. I think they did a really good job kind of rounding out one particular story and then bleeding into the next story rather than just kind of all over the place for four hours. In Lord of the Rings when it was four hours, it just seemed like it just kept going on and on and on because it was four hours of the same story where we got four hours of, you know, five different stories, which made it feel like it wasn't so long and drawn out. I have a lot of questions though. I, I followed the story except with this Martian Manhunter guy. 
Why did he fake being Martha and coming to Lois? I think it was to try to inspire Lois to get back out into the world. This was before Superman came back, but that's the the gist that I got. You remember back in the X-Men movies when Mystique's eyes would go yellow? It was 100% for the audience, I think, because what a weird choice to go into the hallway, go to Martian Manhunter, and then transform into the other guy. Silly fan service. I know a lot of people were happy to see yeah. him in there. That's essentially what it was, just fan service for people that know Martian Manhunter. The only disjointed part that I thought of the movie was the dream at the end. I was really confused, and then when I realized it was a dream, it made more sense, but it still felt kind of like out of place. To me, they keep teetering on, is this reality or is this a dream? Because, you know, they're talking about these multiple timelines that have now been created, but then he's waking up from it. Uh, but there was still that flash that was in Batman versus Superman. Remember, he came through the portal, he's like, Lois well, is the key. You know, she's the key to every, I'm too early. Seems as though this is a, either an alternate timeline or something that will happen in the future, alluding to Superman losing Lois Lane and basically losing his stuff. And then my other question, and maybe I just got confused on the story, who is Aquaman's dad? I thought it was the... Poseidon, right? He's human. Oh, that's all. I really liked it. I'm surprised. I did not think I was going to like a four-hour movie about characters that I wasn't really invested in yet. For me, the third act, like, really sold me on the movie. We were joking about some things, maybe some continuity things that we just noticed at the time, and we're having fun, but it was really when Superman finally came back, I was sold. I was like, yes, and I could see them all fighting together. I loved it. That's what ended up selling me. I love this. This is great. Matt got through another four-hour movie. We haven't done many four-hour movies on the channel, nor have we done many new releases. We did three in a so row. This my ass. Well, this is both. <laughs> what did you think of the Snyder Cut? Oh, cool. Y'all want me in the video? Right now? <laughs> I'm kidding. Jesus. The Snyder Cut. So many of these characters looked fantastic. Now, I mean that by way of their actual suits, their armor, whatever you want to call it. Physically, like, again, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna see Jason Momoa. Like, I know he was in great shape and everybody loves him. There were so many characters. So much of the female cast of the- uh, Amazons? The, the, the Amazons, they, like, every girl looked fantastic. Just, I mean, and obviously that's very intentional. I don't know, they just did a great job with the physicality of these actors. The conditioning that they went through and all that, I just, I love that, so that's dope. Who's the dude with the wings in the very beginning? He was friggin' yoked. It was Zeus we decided, So right? it was Zeus. <laughs> it was Zeus and Aaron's brother, but uh, yeah, that was Zeus. He's a big He's weightlifting guy yes. also. I, like, I, you I, will know who he is. I think, he well, I think that I have seen him in like the, the bodybuilding world. I just don't know his name. I don't know him very well. There was a line, everything you can do today, I'm excited to see what you'll do tomorrow. It was something, I'm paraphrasing, but that was Victor's mom and then the car crash. I thought that was a really profound moment. I like that. I like that a lot. His remembering that is very much speaking to he wants to move on. I really enjoyed Victor and his character arc of having to get through. You know, he was the character with the real struggle, I feel like. I think it was a good thing. I think they did it well, but there were many people that were very essential. So Victor was like, he's the one with the three mothers that disconnects it, but you gotta have Flash spinning around in a circle. like. They did it well, but my God, there was a lot of room for error for that, I think. Like, I, I With think- your plan? No, no, no. I mean, from a storytelling perspective, they they did it well. Oh, okay. But just a lot of room for error there. Something completely unrelated and probably something you don't give a damn about. I love that they pointed out that Flash has to take in more calories due to his, his energy expenditure. I love that so much. You have the blood of the old gods in you. That was dope. Like, that was a- Oh, spiky head bad guy. Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf saying it to her at like, I I don't know, that was just a profound moment. Like he was saying like, I, I realize your power, like you're dope. A bunch of bygone gem moments. I forget who said it, but they said hate is useless. Three word, one liner, just so impactful. Hate is useless. Yeah, it was one of them. So good. Your guilt outweighs your reason. All right, I'm always dressed. Did that bug y'all? Incredible. Incredible. It bugged y'all. <laughs> it was really dumb. Everybody's like suiting up. He's like, everybody suit up. And then Victor's like, I'm always dressed. Make your own future. Make your own past. It's all now. Holy hell. Like when he said, make your own past, I was like, how do you make your own past? I was like, oh my God, that's right. Because in the current, you are eventually going to make your own past. And Victor, like he passed that test of the three motherships. Mother boxes. Mother right. box? Yes. Yep. When he said, I'm not alone, I think I out loud blew his eardrum out and was like, whoa! 
Like, so good. So, so good. This movie did a great job. My two big issues with it is that Superman came back. You know how I feel about that. I don't like when you reverse time and all that in a movie. Having said that, in the 1960s or 70s Superman, they explicitly said, you know, you can't turn back time. That was not explicitly said. That was like not a rule here. So I'm not gonna take a whole point away from them on that. And the movie was so good and it was so cinematically beautiful. I think this might be, this might be the most beautiful movie I've ever seen from a cinematic wow. standpoint. Yeah, absolutely incredible. But I, they did such a good job that I can get past S Superman came back and I can get past them reversing time. It is gonna take a little bit of points off, but yeah. The thing I really love the most about this, which contributes to its runtime of four hours, is that it really felt like each character was needed, had a significant role and significant challenges to overcome Flash. The very end getting hit and he's like, I, I can't maintain it, I gotta keep going. Cyborg having that test at the very end, dealing with stuff with his mother and his father and who he was in his prior life. You know, just seeing, you know, we can all be together again, you know, as a form of manipulation, overcoming that. Diana dealing with her entire world being attacked, essentially, and Steppenwolf trying to use psychological warfare on her to, you know, screw with her head about that. So I loved all of that, and if we needed a four-hour runtime to circumvent, you know, two or three other movies to get to this point, I'm okay with that. This was uh, fantastic. Visually one of the best. Snyder does the slow-mo color grading aspects with very good music. You know, that's kind of a trademark thing I picked up on. One thing I leaned over to Jeremy, uh, seeing a couple shots from the theatrical and in this, color graded a little differently. In particular, the scene where Wonder Woman is standing on the statue at the very beginning. I remember seeing it in the theatrical cut and thinking it looked so cheesy, so bad. It looked like it was a set, you know, it looked awful. And in this, I'm like, dude, that, that works. Same shot, just looks different, and it, and it uh, brought it all together. That's really my thoughts on it. Let's go ahead and rate it. Curious to hear what you all want to rate it. Jeremy, you said your rating had changed. You gave it a four out of 10 initially. And uh, what, do you, what would you give it now? Zack Snyder has a deep reverence for these DC characters. I think a much deeper reverence than I have for them, and I don't want to let that diminish my take on the movie, and I feel like a lot of times when I see somebody treat these kind of characters as so serious, there's a part of my cynical brain that just kind of wants to laugh it off. But knowing the context about what Zack Snyder went through to make this movie, and then going back and re-watching it, there is a soulful element to each and every one of these characters. As Holden mentioned, and as Matt also said in particular about Cyborg, I feel like Flash, Cyborg, and Aquaman are revealed to be much more soulful characters than anything yeah. that I got out of the theatrical version of the film. I think people would have handled this a lot better had it have been called Injustice instead of Zack Snyder's The Justice League because when they think of DC canon, when they think of Superman and all of these characters, they want light, fun, triumphant, positive, and knowing what Zack Snyder went through and then seeing how bleak the movie is and how even the darkest timeline in the future is, to get a little bit sentimental, it's like, I feel like that really explains Zack Snyder's worldview, right? Like, it's hard, life is hard. There are unique challenges that just hit you over and over and over again. And to see Superman constantly kind of fall from grace and then have to build himself back up, I think allegorically and narratively that there's power to that, there's weight to that. And it's just this idea of like, yes, things are the darkest before the dawn. And um, I, I really dig that part about it. And that's something that I appreciate now going back and rewatching it. So all of that said to say that my score for this movie went from seeing it once and giving it a four to seeing it this time and saying it's a seven out of 10. Prime, man, what about you? Wow, four the first time yeah. watching it? I, I would have said four for the theatrical Justice League because I didn't like that one. The, the whole fight scene with Steppenwolf at the end, I did not enjoy it when I first, I, I'm like, what the heck is going on? I did notice, this isn't spoiler because it's a very side note, the whole family in that truck, yeah. trying to get away from that, gone. gone. And I mean, it sucks for their acting careers, I guess, but it just, it had no point. I'm like, what is going on? They're in a truck, right? Anyways, I didn't have any kind of issues with that watching this this time. That, like I said, would have rated a four. This, I'm gonna throw up at eight because I, I just, I enjoyed it and there's gonna be issues and I know I'm gonna have some change of mind on some things when I rewatch it again, but the fact is, is I will rewatch this again because I, I enjoyed it. So Jenna, what would you rate this? Considering this was so long and it kept my attention and I feel like I, for the most part, understood the storyline, I think that gives it a, at least an extra 
something. So I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm actually right on par with Jeremy. I'm right at a seven out of 10. I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's the best thing that's ever been made. I don't think it's the best superhero movie. I don't know if this is because I just watched it or because I watched it with y'all and we had a good time watching it. I think this is the best of the three Snyder movies of Man of Steel, BVS. I think this is the best of that. I really enjoyed it. That's where I'm at, seven out of 10. Matt, I know you took some notes. What did you think? Yeah, you're right. The length of it, it actually did not feel like four hours. Uh, looking at the clock, it makes me want to vomit, but yeah, it was four hours. The last few minutes, there was just a few jumbled scenes thrown in there that was not necessary, it feels like. And I did not, of course, follow every single piece. I was able to let some of the things go because of just the overall, they did a great job, and I'll give it an eight and a half. Wow. Mm -hmm. Before we like wrap this up for good, what did you think about this portrayal of the Joker being that you haven't seen it before? Well, I want to know what y'all think before I make my stance. Well, Suicide Squad came out before this. It's tied in the same universe, but that was the introduction to Jared Leto's Joker. He looks, this is that premonition takes place in the future. He does look visually different in Suicide Squad. I did not like Jared Leto's Joker at all in Suicide Squad. I did not care for it. Wow. Coming off the heels of Heath Ledger, and I know that people don't like to compare, but Joaquin Phoenix, we did. My friend watches uh, Joker, he really enjoyed it. I just don't like it. Uh, in this one, he seemed to actually kind of revert more to our classical sense of the Joker. So I, I, I liked him in this. Yeah, I really disliked the Joker in Suicide Squad. Like, oh, okay. big time. Made me cringe every time he came onto the movie. And he kind of won me over. Like Holden said, it's like he dialed it back just enough. And so did Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Like, yes. they still, they were true to the performance. They dialed it down just a little bit. And thinking that Batman is in a situation with Joker in this timeline where he trusts to give him an assault rifle and they're on a mission together? That's yeah. freaking dope, dude. That is so like something out of injustice. So like, I, I think it's really cool. It's just so far from any translation of these characters that I would have ever explored. In Batman vs Superman, we very briefly saw a Robin suit with the ha 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 on it, alluding to Death in the Family, which is a classic comic book. It's probably one of the most well-known Batman comics where Joker kills Robin. Fun fact about that comic, it was one of the first times that the publishers reached out to the fans and asked what they wanted to happen. So they wrote two endings, ones where the fans voted to spare Robin, where Batman saves him, and one where they wanted him to die. Fans voted for him to die, and that's the story that went on. That's another reason it became so popular. They're alluding to some degree to that comic where something happened, Batman let the boy wonder do something a man should have done, and it ended up getting him killed. So yeah, what did you think about the Joker? First of all, I love Jared Leto, so I'm, I'm biased. Ever since the Dallas Buyers Club, I saw the range and just incredible ability that he has. So I liked that. I thought it was great. When he did, um... Are you sure I'm joke? Yeah, that made no sense. That was very ill, ill placed and maybe ill timed. And there was one piece where he, did he laugh? He did something that was very much of Heath Ledger. And I did kind of like, oh, that's not, I mean, yeah. th but, I liked him. I liked him. We'll watch Suicide Squad and we'll get to see his Joker a, a lot more in depth and Harley Quinn and all that good stuff. Apparently Harley Quinn is dead. A little spoiler for me. Go ahead. Uh, no, actually, no. He uh, said no. that he said that. Well, it was news to me. Yeah, we... It was news to all of us. That is not the... Joker spoiled it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what you thought of the Snyder Cut down below. I'd love to try and get on there and talk about some stuff we didn't take notes on or something. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out everyone's channel here. We got Prime. Hello. Matt and Jeremy, of course, consider subscribing if you want to see more fun content like this. Jen and I are going to be doing Avengers here very soon because she hasn't seen that. And hopefully we'll be able to get her opinion on Justice League. She wasn't able to make it today, but I'd love to hear her thoughts on the Snyder Cut as well. Consider joining me on Patreon. It's a great way to get early access to select videos like this. As always, we all appreciate you watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Take care.